Hey, Akash, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, friends. I'm Akash, and currently what I'm doing is researching the history of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a beautiful island nation located just on the southern coast of India in the Indian Ocean. It is a truly, truly remarkable place. So I decided that I'd spend some time to go and review the history of Sri Lanka and learn all the fascinating things that this island nation has to offer. Truly, truly wonderful. So, Akish, do you want to tell us some more about what you've learned about Sri Lanka? Yes, I absolutely can. So, one thing that I want to share with you about Sri Lanka is its name. Because obviously, Sri Lanka is the name that we all know for this island. But, it is not the only name that has been given. There have been plenty of names that have been given to Sri Lanka over the years. And it all starts with the ancient language of the Indian subcontinent, Samskritam, or Sanskrit. Because in Sanskrit, the word for lion is Simha. And this is going to be a pretty, pretty crucial bit of this whole mystery as to how these different names arose. And that's because if you combine Simha with the ending La, which in Sanskrit refers to an adjective, you get Simhala. So lion has become lion-like. And this was the term that was used to refer to the people of Sri Lanka and their language as well. And that's why the official language, or one of the official languages of Sri Lanka is Sinhala or Sinhalese. So this root, Sinhala, later became the term used to describe the entire country of Sri Lanka in Sanskrit. And this is where all of these names would come from with the exception of one interesting case, and that is the name Sri Lanka itself. That's right, as it turns out, we're not exactly sure where the name Lanka came from. I mean, it's mentioned in some very ancient books of Sanskrit times, like the Ramayana mentions it, and it's been mentioned in countless other pieces of Sanskrit literature. But this name, Lanka, we're not exactly sure where it came from. All we know is, it's the Sanskrit word as well. And so, you might be wondering, where did this she come in? Because Lanka used to be the original name, there wasn't any she. But where did that come in? And the reason why that came in is because of the Sri Lanka independence movement. Because this was during the time, and now we're fast forwarding to the 1960s and 70s. And this is when Sri Lanka was under British control. Now, at this point is when the Sri Lanka Freedom Party was established. And this would later become a very influential political party in Sri Lanka. And so, what they did was they added the term Sri, which is an honorific in Sanskrit. If you're referring to anyone as Sri, that means like you're giving honor to them. And so, they're sort of like honoring their country by calling it Sri Lanka. And it was this party and Eventually, originally it would be just a few, you know, advocates of independence. Eventually, pretty much the whole country started calling it, calling this island Sri Lanka. And eventually, when it, the country gained independence from Britain, they took on this name, Sri Lanka. And that is where this main name, the name that you and I know today, came from. So let's discuss the second name. And this is the name that many of you will know if you were around before Sri Lanka's independence, or if you are familiar with the British term Ceylon. Ceylon was the former name that the British colonial, uh, the British colonial gave it. And you want to know why this is, right? Because Ceylon, Sri Lanka, it doesn't really add up, does it? And that's because it doesn't actually come from the name Sri Lanka. It actually comes. That's right, from Simhala. Sanskrit returns here, everyone. So with Simhala, what happened was it went through a series of sound changes as it passed between many, many languages. And so Simhala in Sanskrit went to Sihala in Pali. And Pali is the language common when Buddhism was spread around the Indian subcontinent. So that's why Simhala became Sihala. And Buddhism was a common thing in Sri Lanka around that time, so the name became Pali. And then from Sihala, then the Persians came in. And this is when the Muslim conquest was taking place. And so Sihala became Ceylon. 
And you may be wondering why this is. If I'm being honest, I have no idea either, but it's a long, long series of complicated sound changes, and eventually you get the name Cylon. And Cylon changed a bit as new cards, uh, as new conquests came in, the Europeans came over, and eventually that name Cylon became the English term Ceylon, and that's where you get this name. Now, the next name I want to discuss is actually a bit different from all of this, and that name is Taprabani, or Taprabana. Okay, obviously this is way different from anything I've seen, and that's because it doesn't come from Simhala. Instead, it actually comes from the name, and I hope I get this right, Tamra Parna. And Tamra means copper, Parna I believe means tree, so it actually means copper-colored tree. So, that was the meaning of this, and eventually, when the Greek people saw this name, I have no clue how they got to how they got to Sri Lanka, but when they saw this name, they took it into their language, and Tamratanna became Taprabani. And Taprabani got taken by the Romans, became Taprabana, and eventually this term was used in a few books of its time to refer to just a luxurious place. Because to Europeans, Sri Lanka seemed very, very exotic as did a lot of Asia, so that's why that term became used for that reason. Now, aside from all this, there's one last name I want to discuss, and that name is the Tamil name for Sri Lanka, and that name is Elam. Now, Elam is actually probably a really interesting story, and the reason for this is because it too also comes from the name Simhala, Yes, that is right. It actually comes from that name, Simhala. And that's because through another long-winded series of different sound changes over many languages, that that term Simhala became Elam. And that process is a bit too complicated to explain here, but Elam became the common name that Tamil people used, and as Tamils make up quite a lot of the Sri Lanka population as well, Elam became a standard name. And eventually, we're coming to another one, and that name is Serendib. And Serendib, and obviously it sounds a bit weird, and that's because this is anglicized, but this was originally the Arabic name for Sri Lanka. And it was the Arabic name because, again, it's from Simhala. More specifically, it's from Simhala Dvipa. And this is because Dvipa, in Sanskrit again, means island. And you see this in a few other place names, like Lakshadweep which means a hundred thousand islands. Laksha is a hundred thousand, or voila. Now, coming back to Simhala Dvipa, this went through another series of changes before it entered into Persian and eventually into Arabic as Serendib, or I guess you would say Sarendib. So Serendib is the Arabic name. So if we come back all the way through every single one of these names, we've covered through Taprabani, Elam, Serendib, Ceylon, and of course, Sri Lanka. These are all of these names. It is truly, truly incredible to see just how much this country has shaped over time. It's different names throughout history. It is amazing. And I would truly recommend for you to never miss up or never pass up a great opportunity to go visit this beautiful island nation in the Indian Ocean, Sri Lanka. Love you. Akash.